Welcome to Will the Beard Reviews. Today we're talking about Heroes in Crisis, issue 3, written by Tom King. Uh, Clayman did the art for pages 1 and 20, and Lee Weeks did the other pages 2 through 19. Now, this is a 9-issue miniseries that is dealing with the events at a place called Sanctuary, which was a sanctuary for heroes and villains that needed to get some, some mental help to deal with some things, to work through some stuff from their their actions and the things that they witnessed in the line of their duty if they were heroes and then the things that they did as as villains. Or at least that's what was presented to us. And now there's been a lot of controversy around this book from issues one and two, both from what was presented to us because it wasn't really what was promised to us in the lead up to this book. Um, it was more of a murder mystery. There were some uh, killed heroes or some murdered heroes at the beginning and the last two issues have kind of dealt with who did that let's chase down like harley quinn or uh booster gold who are the main two suspects in those deaths however issue three finally gives us the real deep dive into um the psychosis or I don't know, psychosis is the wrong word psychology is the right word behind these heroes and what they are dealing with and what they've had to deal with in their line of duty and this issue focuses on three characters wally west flash lagoon boy and booster gold and i adore the way this book shows the three different paths that they take in dealing with the things that have happened to them in the line of duty as heroes Let's start with The Flash. So, I'm not a huge Flash fan. I read Flash for about this long there for a little bit, but I'm really glad I did because Wally West came back. The original Wally West. We still have the Wallace West, the the, the black one um, that was started at the New 52, but because of some of the um, things that they've done restarting the universes, we ended up with two Wally West. So this one came back, and over the course of the time that he was in the book and then in Flash War, we figure out that he had some kids that were just erased in the timeline. And that's the thing that he's dealing with at Sanctuary. And so Sanctuary is kind, it seems like it's an interface. I can't tell if it's a mask you put on and then it does, like you see things in your head, or if it's almost like more like a holodeck, like from Star Trek, you walk in there and you can program it to show you whatever you want. Regardless if it's an interface or that, we'll figure that out as the book continues. But Wally goes in and he wants to immerse himself in the world that could have been or the world that was, depending on the timeline, and see those kids of his and go on adventures with them, um, put them to bed at night, things like that. So he's using Sanctuary as a way of you know seeing what was or what could have been to use that as his catharsis. Now, let's go to Lagoon Boy, who, I don't read Titans, and so the events that he's dealing with happened over there, but from what I can tell, there were a couple of characters that died um, in a battle, and then he was hit with a laser beam. And he's going into this sanctuary, into this interface or holodeck, and having it continuously hit him in that same scene, that, that laser beam, over and over and over again, dozens, hundreds of times, just so he can process, can feel it again, can try to come to grips with what happened. So you have someone who is, you know, reveling in what should have been or what could have been, someone reveling in what happened, and then we go to Booster Gold, and I believe he's there from the events of The Gift, which was a couple issue story arc in Batman where he created this nasty alternate future where he, his wedding gift to Batman was saving Batman's parents and it created this nasty alternate timeline and Booster Gold kind of went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. His way of dealing with that was to sit in a room staring at a copy of himself and then they end up fighting each other. So he hates himself and he's beating himself up for what he did almost literally sitting there with a copy of himself in the same room. I love those three paths, those three different ways of dealing with the psychological trauma that these heroes have been through. I absolutely adored it. This is the issue that fulfills the promise that I thought that, that they made us with this book, with everything they talked about, their announcements of it. So I'm so, so glad that 
the issue three had this. Also in this book, we also get, um, there's an emergency that happens, which is the event that led to the hero's death. And it seems like Harley Quinn was the one that killed Wally, at least, or at least she hit him in the head really hard with her, with that giant mallet that she carries. So I don't know if that's really what happened. There's a lot of time jumping and non-linear storytelling going on here. So we'll see. Like I said, there's only, this is, we're only a third of the way through this, issue three of nine. So we've got six issues left, so I'm sure there's a lot more story to tell. But like I said, issue three, if for me, is the issue that fulfills the promise that everyone made talking about this book during the lead up. So guys, I want to know what you think about Heroes in Crisis so far, specifically about issue three. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.